I love this because we used to just buy random lists. Um, we used to just buy lists, fill in our CRM, and just start dialing away, right? Um, right. But what's cool is you're actually able to like buy more targeted market nowadays. Um, you could buy like a list that just focuses on law firms, let's say. Um, so you're able to actually focus your calls and you can, can sometimes get like cell phone numbers or whatever it might be to really help with you getting to these clients, right? Or potential prospects. Um, so really, it just helps you with that faster sales cycle. Like the big thing is, is I was wasting so much time calling dead numbers. 50% um, of my day or 50 calls a day would, I wouldn't get through and I would know I wouldn't because it wasn't even the right number. Um, people right. are changing, new people are, let's say, getting new jobs um, out of work because of COVID, whatever it might be. So I don't want to waste that time. So updating that list, um, automation is the way to go with this one for sure. 100%. The way you can smart target, uh, this is, you don't see it here, but it's it's uh, based on a book called Predictable Revenue by Aaron Ross, a good friend of ours. Uh, smart targeting, you know, you focus on ideal industries, companies, uh, you research the themes, and this is basically goes back to the first question we received, you know, is this applicable to, to like uh, uh, big ticket sales or larger, fairly larger? Uh, definitely it is. You always want to start with smart targeting. It, this precedes your sequence. You can't do a successful sequence if you don't work on the data, if you don't have a proper data, and if you don't do your homework, who can you actually target? And if you don't know, then don't expect from sales guys to bring you the results if you don't know who are, who, who are your ideal customer profiles. If you don't know who are, who are your ideal customer profiles, well then give them at least six months, three to six months to, to, to figure it out and to make their assumptions uh, and to try and prove them. So that's what you want to do, right? If you're starting a new business. Uh, so smart targeting is really important. You want to focus on the revenue potential and likelihood of winning. So if you get a lot of no's, I know Thomas, you're very particular about this, so we can do a follow up with that or they can just book a call with you. Uh, you know, just we were talking about this while preparing for the session. Uh, just mark, mark deals as lost. Who cares? Like if, if you tried, you, you, you followed up, you went back and forth and you see that you know, you're just, you know, tire kickers, like you want to focus on those that want to say yes. Okay, so six options for you to build your list. Again, it's very important. You remember my mistake back from the, the outsourcing days. I spent one third of my month just researching the data. If you're not focused on that, don't do it. Um, you have six options. Use your own database and inbound leads that you're getting from marketing departments. If you're a larger company, you get a lot of ma magnets on your website or whatever online. You go to conferences, well, not anymore, but you used to go to conferences and collect these inbound leads. Beautiful, use that. Find a good database provider. A bunch of database providers are out there. You have AutoClose, you have Zoom Info. There's a bunch of data providers. You can outsource it. Uh, you can go to Upwork and outsource it. it it's a little bit more mundane, but I think it's, um, uh, you know, it can prove it can prove valuable. You can do semi in-house, semi using the, the the third party software, which is also fine. So you, so what what what, what do I mean by semi uh, in-house? Well, you go on LinkedIn, you figure out who are the companies you want to go after, the decision makers, and then you find someone to look for emails and and uh, phone numbers, direct dials, and all that. Uh, uh, just uh, so so that that's very kind of that's you can do that. Uh, hire in-house usually the worst option. I mean, if you're a large company, then definitely hire in-house. If you're, if you have, you know, 10 to 50 sales reps in your company, don't do it. You can outsource it uh, and, and just don't worry about it. Um, if the SDRs, A's are about to do the research, that's by far the worst option because you want them to be selling, building relationships and closing, uh, obviously with a K, not with a C. Uh, and uh, and uh, and you don't want them to be doing this, okay? And finally, your CRM, your contacts become dirty very soon, very very quickly. Uh, ba basically, after three months, you know, sales reps, recruiters, they change jobs all the time. Uh, basically, want to validate your email, so it's important to validate the emails, not to kill the business. And now, interesting thing, Thomas and I, we really like this slide. You see, auto close is an email automation but no single channel will effectively target all of your audiences at every stage of the buying cycle. Ain't gonna happen. So this slide is super important. You wanna utilize email automation, you wanna utilize LinkedIn, you wanna get on a call, you wanna send that SMS, do whatever it takes to find your decision maker. Right, Thomas? What, what, yeah, you know what? Um, I totally agree with you because email sequences will not work on their own. Um, right. They do have to have kind of that substitute with you calling, with you sending a LinkedIn follow. Right. I'm not going to say you're never going to get a meeting book from them, but to really enhance it and get that results that you want, 100%. you got to put them in a cadence, right? Get all those different types of touch points.
Thank you.